Well, guys, be quiet. Um, I, I forgot to record, and we did number 30, and then somebody said, oh, aren't you supposed to record for Liddell? And I said, oh, shoot. So there's number 30. If you want me to go back through that, come and ask me, okay? So starting with 29. Describe how those two things are related. What, what, what do I mean by doing this? What am I asking you? Like what the transformations are. Okay? So you're starting with x squared, and you got to figure out what the 2 is doing and what the 4 is doing. So there's two things happening. Okay? Which one comes first? The 2. The 2. Let's start with the negative 2. How is the negative 2 moving him? Right 2. Right 2 units. Right 2 units. Okay, what's the 4 doing? Vertical stretch by 4. There you go. That's how he's being moved. There you go. That's, that's it. Okay? Good, good. All right. 28 is the same, but, but reversed. 28 is the same, but reversed. We're starting with this. Circle him. Absolute values. Okay? Um, how many things are happening? Three. Three. Three things. One, two, three. There are three things happening. So, horizontal compression by two is the first one. Over X is the second one, and then three up is the last one, okay? So I'm going to do those three, and I'm going to show the progression of what this equation looks like, okay? So if I'm starting with absolute value, horizontal compression by two, what does that look like? Um, one half needs to go inside, right? So he changes to, um, I'm going to call him Y instead of F of X because it's easier to write. One half X. That's what he looks like after the first step, Okay. <laughs> then if I reflect him over the x-axis, that's going to make a negative, but where does the negative go? Outside or inside? Inside. Outside. 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 Oh, Cody, I have that question right. Get right, Cody. Oh, oh. Quit it. <laughs> three up. What's three that's up do? Three. No. Three. And then just put plus three on the outside. Plus three on the outside. Okay, so final, final. Uh, we'll call him, we'll write the rule for G of X. So we want to name him G of X now. There we go. That's what he looks like. Good, good? All right, moving on. I'm not going to wait for you. If you don't have it written down, I'm not waiting. How do you know? You can go back to the video. Okay? 27. <laughs> 27. Determine the vertex. What? The y intercept is positive 2. How do you know the y intercept is positive 2? Right? Basically, you plug 0 in for x. Are these going to be the same order? No. They weren't last year. Sorry. Well, some of us don't remember, remember last year. We don't care. Plus zero on for x. Two is the y-intercept. How do you find the vertex? There's a formula. How do you find the vertex? Uh, x of the y. y. No. no. Vertex. Let's we'll see if we can find the vertex. No. Make it a b over 2a. Okay? And then you plug them in. Okay, so I'm going to do that over here, vertex. Um, let's do this. Negative, negative 4 over 2 times 2. Positive 4 over 4, which is just 2. So 2 comma something, right? Is that right? 4 divided by 2 times 2 is 2. Oh, God. 1. Blah, 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 blah. 1. 1 comma something. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay, one comma something. So plug it back in. Two times one squared minus four times one plus two. Do that in your head. Two minus four plus two. Zero. The vertex is one comma zero. Yeah? Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I feel like we got two. 
If you, you, you just wait, wait. You just wait. Oh, can you leave it as two? Well, yeah, but are you going to write? Is it going to be the, that's the first one. The one right above, yeah. Yeah, and then are you going to do the other one or not? Yeah, I'm going to do Just for text form. And standard form. This guy is in standard form. If you want to write that on here, this is standard form. So, in order to find the vertex of standard form, you have to use this. The vertex of vertex form is a little bit easier than that. You don't have to do quite so many steps. So, standard form, this, if it's in standard form, this is what you do to find the vertex, okay? This guy is in vertex form. So, it makes him easier, okay? All right, so the way that I think about this is this is a parabola, x squared, and 4 plus 4 moves into the left 4, and 6 moves them up 6. So instead of being at 0, 0, instead of being at 0, 0, he's going to be the left 4 and up 6. So he's going to be here, and he's going to do that, okay? What does the 9 do to him? It's just the... Stretch. It makes him stretchier, so it makes him taller and skinnier, right? Okay. But the nine does not change the vertex, right? So what's the vertex going to be if he's moved in that way? Negative three comma six. Vertex is going to be negative four comma six, just exactly from these numbers. Does that make sense? Except the middle one is the opposite sign, just like left means negative or left means positive, right means negative. Yeah. Okay. So state whether the function opens up or down. Oh, up. up, how do you know? No negative. Sure. Well, I don't know if my picture's right. Well, why, 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 why. It's a positive. No. Positive 9x, so it opens up, upward. Okay, so those two things, we have vertex, we have it opens upward. Done. All right, perfect. Done? Moving on. Let's let's start with the top. Let's start with 23, and we'll go 23, 24, 25, because that kind of increases in, like, what I'm looking for. Okay, so starting with 23. Uh, that's not fun. Keep rolling. We don't care. Quiet. Uh, they give you f of x, and what f of negative 2. What does that mean? Plug in negative 2. Plug in negative 2. Hey, order of operations is really important in this because if you don't know your order of operations, you're going to get. You're gonna get if you don't know that, then how did you end up in trade? Well, I, there's, I still know my order of operations, but I still have two, four divided by four is still two in my mind. You know so why, I, make, uh, I make common mistakes all the time. No, it's not. You just didn't pay attention. Whatever. Anyway, so square root of one, let's change him first. I'm going to go step for step. Square root of one. Then what? Plus two. Plus two. Plus one. Okay? The square root of one is one, right? Which equals four. That's it. Okay? The square root of one is one. Now, is it plus or minus one? Do I need to have two different answers? No. Why not? The square root was already there. We didn't put the square root in. It's not even winter yet. Right. Okay? It's not? All right. No, it's not even all right, 24, find f of 0. Just f of 0. We have to figure out which one we're going to plug into, okay? So if my x is between negative 3 and 0, then I'm going to plug into the top function. If my x is between 0 and 5, I'm going to plug into the bottom function, yeah? Okay? So which one do I plug into? f of 0. The top one, because of this guy. He's including 0. F of 0. I'm going to plug into the top, so I have 0 plus 5. What? There you go. No, you idiot. Plug into the top one. John. Okay. All right, last one. F of negative 3, but you're doing a graph. Now instead. Okay. So negative 3 on the X is here. Negative 3 is here on the X. Where is he touching on my graph? Negative 3. He's, he's touching down here at negative 3, you said? So that one is is a look on the graph type of thing. And f of negative 3 just so happens to be negative 3 also. Yeah? Do you see that on the graph? You can just put negative 3, that's fine. 
unless I have you do like multiple points. If I have you do two points, make sure you label like f of negative three is this, f of this one is this, right? So I know which one you're do. Now, question. Question. What is f of negative four? If I ask you, I'm going to add this to this. What's f of negative four? No, is it positive four or negative four? It's negative four because the whole is covered. This is an open circle. This is a closed circle. So that would be negative four. Yep. Okay. So you didn't have to find that, but I'm adding that in there also because that's a tricky one. And that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if I, show, if I did that to you. Well, okay. that's kind of rude. Sorry. But now you know how to do it. Okay. All right. 22. Solve that and write the solution in interval notation. So how do you solve absolute values? You need to do two cases. Case one and case two. Okay? I need to do two different cases. Listen. I need to do two cases because I don't know if, if what's inside the absolute value is positive or negative. Okay, so do two cases. First case, you boys, be quiet. I can't talk over you. I don't care. Be quiet. Okay. So that's what the first case looks like. The second case. Racist. I don't care. <laughs> okay. There is the second case. So one, one we just drop, the other one we make negative. Yeah? Okay. All right. So solve the first one. What are you going to do? Subtract two. Subtract two. Negative three X is greater than two. Then what? Divide by negative 3. X is less than, less than negative 2 thirds because you have to flip your sign, right? Nice. So I have this part. I'm just going to underline him because okay, so I'm not going to circle him. He's not the final, final answer yet. Okay. Number 2. What would you like to do in number 2? Do you want to distribute the negative? Distribute the negative. No, distribute the negative. You want to distribute the negative? Why? It makes it, it, makes it better. I don't know. It makes it clear. Yeah. What? It makes it matter. It doesn't matter. Just do it however you want. Here we go. I'm going to divide by the negative. So. Okay. Do you see how that works? Okay. Flip the sign. Just be divided by the negative. Okay. All right. Divide by a negative. So it's still X, X is greater than, two. greater than 2. Yep. Doesn't matter if you distribute the negative first or you divide by the negative. But doesn't matter. if you distribute the negative first. You oh, shoot. I shouldn't, underline. I shouldn't have circled that. Underline. Okay. Interval notation. Do you remember what interval notation is? Nope. This right here. This right here on number 20 is interval notation. This way. Number 20 is interval notation. So they want us to write the answer like that. So to do that. I'm going to make a number line just so I can see what's happening. No. This way, I'm going to make a number line to see, see what's happening. Okay, so x is less than negative 2 thirds. That's right here. That's this. Right? x is greater than 2. That way. Okay? Can I write this as one piece for interval notation? No, I cannot. Okay? So how do you write negative 2 thirds and beyond that way? This is the interval. Negative infinity to negative two thirds. That's this interval over here. Okay? And then the other interval is two to infinity. Make sure you put them in that order. If it's equal to, you put the bracket. If it's equal to, you put the bracket. We'll talk about that here in a second. But please make sure that you're going two to infinity instead of infinity to two because infinity is on the right side of two. What? Okay, that's crazy. Okay, this guy means open circle, this guy means closed circle. Does that make sense? That is mine, so. <laughs> okay, so this is the answer, but write this down, maybe two if you need it. A bracket is the equivalent of an open circle, uh, or excuse me, a parenthesis is the equivalent of an open circle, a bracket is closed circle, yeah? Okay, moving on. 21. 21. I have like three seconds.
separate inequalities. I'll wait for you. They're separate. You separate them. So this is one part, and this is another part. Okay, so I'm going to do the first part over here. And the other part on the other side. Okay. Yeah, good? Yeah. All right, solve. I don't know if I'm subtracted the same way you are, but whatever. Am I getting the right answer here? All right, then, last thing. two pieces are connected, we're going to connect them as one piece. What does it look like? Gosh, put X in the middle. Like that. So I'm going to write my answer as one piece. Please do that. Okay? That's the final, final, final answer. Yeah? Good, good? Okay. Number 20. Represent that on a number line. What's the rest of the Write faster. Or stop talking. I'm not, you're not talking, but the girls are. Who's going to come back and watch it? Like Adele's gone. Adele's not even here, so why would she watch it twice? What? She's watching it once. Kaden, you're stupid. She's, she's not recording here. it because she's not here, so she can watch it. Yeah, one I'm time. saying, I'm saying, but if Colton's here and he sees it once, who's gonna go back and watch it twice? That's not. If he misses something. Shut I'm up. Not recording it for you guys. Yeah, yeah, I know. God, We're trying to get a suggestion to rewatch it, but who would do that? Okay. Okay. All right. Wasting time. Negative infinity to four. What does it look like on a number line? Four plus Here's four. Going to negative infinity means to the left. left. Open or closed? closed? Why closed? Because it is a bracket. It is a bracket. That's, that's saying that. Okay, done. Moving on. That's it. Okay, find all solutions. So that means solve. What are you going to do first? Cube the other side. Cube it. Cube it. Take that to the third power. So that makes them go away. On the left, x squared minus 1 is left. On the right, 8. eight. Then, plus 1. x squared equals 9. x equals plus positive, plus negative, minus 3. x equals plus minus 3. Don't That's forget right, Don't forget your plus minus. Now, my, my wording of this problem was to help you a little bit. It says find all solutions. Listen, find all solutions, meaning there might be more than one. Is there more plus than one minus. solution? Yes, there Two, is. Two, plus and minus, yeah. So my wording is to help you. Go next. 18. How do you solve an absolute value? One thing you got to go Two cases. Two cases. 
gotta do all the top one and divide by that and you'll probably remember like one, two, two three, three, and Q? Yes. I don't think so. If there's a P and Q on here, you have to do a P and Q. If not, then you don't have to. Uh, that was in the long division of synthetic and the Oh, so we're already past it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. Number one, I'm just gonna I'm gonna solve. I'm not gonna talk. Okay. Now on this one, you have the option of dividing the negative over. But does that make my job any easier? Because I'm still going to have to, if I divide the negative over, I'm still going to have to have two pieces that I just didn't have. You wrote it wrong. It should be negative 2x plus 1. Oh, plus sorry. So the, okay. okay, so this is minus to start with. That makes this plus to end with. Okay, sorry. Thank you. That's Thank you for fixing that. Did I do it on, correct on the left? Yeah, yes. yeah, he's fine on the left. Okay, so I just distributed the negative through on this one. Doesn't matter what you do. You can divide it over if you want to, but that doesn't make my life any easier, so I just decided to uh, do that. Good? Yeah. yeah. The one with the negative to start. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I got it wrong. I wrote it wrong to start with. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they said. Oh. All right, we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. All right, 17. Draw a picture. Draw a picture. Draw a picture of this thing. Triangle has an area of 96, okay? So area is 96. Great. How do you find the area of a triangle? Area of a triangle. Base. One half, base, base one times half. height. One half, base times height. Or base times height divided by two. I don't care. One half, base times height. So I know that that has to be 96, right? Draw a picture. Let's see what he looks like. It says, I don't know, whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay. Here's my triangle. It says the height is two-thirds of the base. Okay, so let's name the base first. Let's call it B. Okay, height is this height right here, right? And it's, we'll call him H, right? And it says the height is two-thirds of the base. So what is what is the height equal to? Two-thirds. B. B. Seriously, Cody? Everybody took the opportunity to tell you. Get ready. Two-thirds Two-thirds B, okay? All right, so... Now, instead of one half BH, I can take this H and I can plug this in here, right? Okay? So, one half B and H is now instead two thirds B, right? And what's that equal to? 96. Okay? All right, so let's combine some stuff. What's one half and two thirds? Or you cross the twos out, right? One third. One third what? B squared equals 96. Then what? Okay, you divide by one third or? Or times that by three. I'm going to times by three. That's going to cross him out. Times three. So B squared equals whatever 96 times three is. I don't know. What? 288. Okay, take the square root. B equals 16.97. Okay, now, that's a good question. We put the square root in there, right? So it should be plus or minus, but why is it not? We're doing length, okay? So the base is only 16.97. Okay, then they want height also. So two-thirds of 16.97. Okay, so times 2 divided by 3, whatever that is, H equals 11.3. Perfect. And that is all in inches. Inches, inches. Are you going to change it or something? I don't know. I don't remember what this is.
Might be a rectangle. I don't know. Yeah? Yeah. Square, squares are the best. All right, number 16. Find the number of solutions of the equation by computing the discriminant. Do you remember what discriminant is? Yep. Oh, yeah, it's X negative. No, it's minus 4. Yeah. It's minus 4. C. 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 I forgot to see on there. Okay. Now, in the quadratic formula, it's the square root of b squared minus 4ac. The discriminant is just b squared minus 4ac, not the square root included. Okay. But I put the square root there so you know where it comes from, right? Just b squared minus 4ac. Okay. Now, there's a problem with 16 to start with. You have to rearrange the Okay. All right, the 70 needs to come to this side. So I'm going to rearrange him. Minus 70t plus 49. So A, B, C. Let's figure out what those are. What's A? What is your A? 25. 25. B is? Negative 70. C is? 49. Perfect. Okay, so B squared is negative 70 squared. Is that going to be a positive number or a negative number? Positive. positive. It always turns positive. 25, 49. Okay? So 70 squared. You should be able to do that in your head. What's 7 49. squared? Uh, uh, 7. But 40, 49 with two zeros. Okay? 4 times 25 is 100 times 49. Minus 4,900. Okay? So 0. Okay, because if I type it into the calculator, I'm going to type it in wrong. Okay, so my discriminant is zero, which means that whatever's inside the square root after I do negative b plus minus is the square root of zero over two a, whatever. Right? That's what I get. But negative b plus zero and negative b minus zero is the same thing. So how many solutions am I going to end up with? One. Eight. One. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, so the answer is zero, but what does that tell us? That tells me that there's one solution because if I would do the whole quadratic equation, negative b plus zero is going to be the same thing. What is it? If, it's a, if it's a okay, so zero is one solution, if it's an even number. So, if your discriminant, we'll we'll do the different scenarios. Here, our discriminant was zero, so I had one solution. Okay, we'll go positive negative. Okay. If it's a negative number, you have a negative inside of a square root. That means no solutions. No solutions, because I can't have I can't have a negative inside of a square root, right? So no solutions. What about if it's a positive number? Two. Two, two solutions. Why two? Where did the two come from? Plus, minus. Plus something minus something. Two solutions. Okay. Okay. Now, question. What 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 are solutions? Like what does that mean? There are two numbers for X. Yeah, where he crosses. So basically I have either this happening, this happening, or this happening, right? One of those. Does that make sense? Here is one, here is two, here is none. Okay, you don't have to graph those, but, but I'm just saying that's what that means, right? Okay? What? I don't know. You gotta figure it out, right? 15, use the quadratic formula. Hey, are we done? Keep going. Oh, Keep shoot, going. we are technically done. Let's do this last one because I already started. Keep going as much as we can. Quadratic formula. Okay. Is he ready to go for the quadratic formula? Do I need to move him around? No. He's ready. A, B, C. Four. Negative eight. One. Perfect. Okay. Negative, negative 8, or positive 8, plus, minus. Okay. All right. This guy will be 64 minus what? 64 minus what? 16. What is 64 minus 16? 48. So 8 plus minus square root 48 all over 8. Okay. Can I reduce all three of those by 8? Yes. One's trapped inside, but 48. 48, I break him down.
16 and 3 is the largest, right? So this guy is 4 squared is a 3. That's what he is. 4 squared is a 3 all over 8. And then each one of these divide by 4. 2 plus or minus 2 over 3 over 8. There you go. Okay? Beautiful? That's all. You want to stop? Yeah. Sure. No. Go one more. No. One more. No. We'll vote. We have 14 left in one day. Keep going. I don't care. Keep. Uh, don't vote. Keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six. Stop. One, two, three, four, five. Let's get it. Six wins. All right. Let's do. Let's do a couple more. Completing the square. One, two, three, four, ten, two, four, wait It's fine. She counted. Oh, my gosh. Just keep there going. There was six oh and six. Okay, we'll do a couple more. Okay. You're a cheater. I did not. That was five. Just five. 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 Hey, five. Five. completing the square. Tag goes to me. Let's go. Completing the square. Yeah, completing the square. What do you do? Put the one over. This is the only time. This is the only time you ever move the one to the other side. Only time. I did. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's the only time you move the one over. Otherwise, you leave it because we want to factor and do all that good stuff, okay? So, complete the square. This one's a hard completing the square. Okay? Why did you do this like this? Sorry. Oh, Okay, so what I want to have happen, listen to this one, this is a hard one, it's going to involve like decimals and such, right? What I want to have happen is whatever number is in here needs to be the same for both pieces, so I can write them as something squared, right? But he needs to add up to be negative 1, right? He needs to add to himself to be negative 1. So what can he take and add it to himself to make him negative 1? Negative half. X minus 1 half and x minus 1 half, or x minus 1 half squared, right? There is a formula for finding that. What's the formula for finding that? Negative 1 half. What? What do we do with the b? What do we do with the b? b divided by 2. b over 2 will give you that number right here. This guy is b over 2. So if you don't want to have to think, negative 1 divided by 2 is negative 1 half. That's my number, right? Okay? Then what goes in the blank? One half, negative 1 half times negative 1 half, which is? Positive 1 fourth. Let's put them like that. Positive 1 fourth, positive 1 fourth. Okay? Now, what is 1 plus 1 fourth not in decimals? As a, as a fraction. 5 over 4, right? 1 is 4 over 4. One fourth is, is five over four. So this guy will be five over four. Okay? All right, so we've got him ready to go, then what? No. I want to solve for x. I'm going to get x by itself. Or it's a w, whatever. Okay, square root, square root. Okay? So I have x minus one half equals the square root of five over four. What am I missing? Plus minus. Make sure you put plus minus in there. Okay. Now, also, I move the one half to the other side, but I can break down the square root of five and the square root of four. The square root of five, nothing comes out of it, right? But what's the square root of four? Two. Two, like that. Okay. So you can write your answer like this if you want to. If I put them in quadratic formula form. I can make him 1 plus minus the square root of 5 all over 2, right? So either one of those works. Does that make sense? Okay. Right. Right. Tell her to go. She'll go back Why? and watch it. Yeah, Kate. Okay. So there's that. So you're going to rewrite all the whole thing. Okay. No, she did it earlier. We'll do one more and then we'll stop. Last one and we'll stop. Solve this thing. What are we solving for? 
Uh, no. W is the only term up there. I just isolate the W, right? right. How do you get the W by itself? Minus 8. Negative 3 W squared equals negative 28. Then what? Divide by negative 3. Okay, take the square root. 3.055. W equals whatever the square root of that is. 3.055. 3.055. You can give it to me as a decimal. That's fine. Uh, but, but plus minus. Good, good? Yes? All right, let's stop. We have 12 left. Okay. Yes. Are you going to make it as gross for the uh, students?